Hello, my lovelies. God blesses us all so wonderfully, greatly, completely, and exactly tailored to each of our heart's desires. This is my token of love for all of you. It's something that came to my heart and I wanted to share with everybody who's willing to listen, take his word to the nations as we're called to do. And if any of you feel in your heart that you can share this link or you can subscribe or you can just tell somebody about these links that I share, please do so. It's all of our responsibility to share God's word. I always ask and invite you all to listen to God's word when we're doing these reflections. If my perspective in any way gives you a smile, then so be it. But they're not focused on me. They're to be focused on the word of God and the word of God alone. His message for you and how to apply that in your life, making it a better day through his grace. This is going to be day one of three, where I'd like to, if you allow me to share some words that God has given to me as we celebrate this beautiful Easter 2023. For me and for my family, Easter is always so special because we get to be reminded that God came to life. That sacrifice, as we'll see in the word, is what gives us eternal life. What a better gift than that. And of course, all of the fun things. I have grandchildren, so the Easter egg hunt, the just celebrating life in itself is so beautiful. In this brief lesson or reflection, I've titled it, His Cross, His Sacrifice, His Calling Offers Us Life. Will you accept the first three uh, verse readings that I'm going to do are John 19, 17 through 22, Luke 22, 39 through 46, and Revelations 3, 20 through 21. This will give us a little bit of an understanding of what his sacrifice was. And then I'll read two other ones, which is Philippians 3, 10 to 11, Luke 9, 23, 27, that reminds us that there's a specific calling for all of us who are willing to hear his word. So let me start off with my reflection and my love token for all of you, and then we'll go straight into the word. In this brief study, I'd like to share with you the word of God and remind you that the sacrifice, this maximum sacrifice that God did for us when he gave his only son to be crucified. This act of sacrifice allowed us to have eternal life in exchange for his only son being ridiculed, tortured, humiliated, and crucified, just to name a few of the things that Christ went through for us, having each of us in mind and extending love to each one of us and then allowing us to decide to take his hand and to follow him into glory. Let us all take a moment, perhaps not at this time, but throughout our days to remember the importance, the depth and the significance of this sacrifice that God made for us. We should never minimize or take for granted what that means. Because if we put ourselves in the perspective of God and we knew that somebody was a true life sinner and we knew this, would we be willing to give up our only child to offer that person life, love? Do we know how to love to that degree? The sacrifice that God made through Christ as human form makes us responsible as his children to respond to the calling of living at his feet, of being everything through him. God makes us calling not to put a heavy load on our shoulders, but for us to live firmly in prayer and through faith 
knowing that through that sacrifice, we can defeat sin. We must live in joy and move forward. If you know of someone who can't move forward, is having a difficult time, it is also our responsibility to remind them of the goodness of God and give them the ability to move forward. If you've already been saved through faith in Christ, and if you have peace and certainty in your heart that your name was handwritten in the book of eternal life, congratulations. Be it God's will that we see each other in his kingdom. However, if you know of someone or if you yourself have not made that decision yet to take hold of your father and be given eternal life, you can do it today. Don't leave for tomorrow what you need to do today. Tomorrow is not at all guaranteed for any of us. You could say a small prayer, and I'll give you an example right now. You don't need an intermediary person, a pastor or a priest. If you have them by your side and you know someone, by all means, please go to them. But if it's not available, you can still speak to God and he will still offer you salvation. He is waiting for you. You can say something like, Lord, I'm here. Please guide me. I give myself to you. I proclaim that I need you. I need you and I invite you to be my Lord, my King, my Redeemer, my Father, and my friend. From this moment on, I give you my life. Help me guide my steps. Change my thoughts and my heart little by little, day by day. It will be a process, Lord. I love you. And by faith in Christ's resurrection, I can have certainty that you have offered me eternal life. Amen. That's just an example. Speak to God how you would speak to what he is. Your best friend and your loving father. With having said that, let's go into the Bible and we're going to use the Amplified Bible translation. We're starting with John 19, 17, 22. These next three verses speak of the process that Christ went as he was crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription on a placard and put it on the cross. And it was written, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. And many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate replied, what I have written, I have written, and it remains written. Amen. Luke twenty-two thirty-nine through 46. The Garden of Gethsemane. And he went out and went, as was his habit, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place called Gethsemane, he said to them, Pray continually that you may not fall into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup of divine wrath from me. Yet not my will, but always yours be done. Now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, deeply distressed and anguished, almost to the point of death, he prayed more intently. And his sweat became like drops of blood, falling down on the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why? Are you sleeping? 
Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Amen. Revelation 3, 20 through 21. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, restore him and he with me. He who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant to him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down beside my Father on his throne. Amen. These next two Bible uh, verses are about the calling for us. Philippians 3, 10 through 11. And this so that I may know him experientially becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in the same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the follow fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness even to his death, dying as he did, so that I may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. Amen. Luke 9, 23 through 27. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to follow me, as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake, he is the one who will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, and loses or forfeits himself. For whoever is ashamed here and now of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the heavenly Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truthfully, there are some among those standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. And with that, my lovelies, I remind you all of the beauty of having Christ decide to take upon him the weight of the entire world's sin. May we further deepen our knowledge of what that really means in our life, not to be weighed down or boggled down by it, but to live as he would want us to live free because the price has already been paid. I love you all dearly and greatly. And may this Easter 2023 be phenomenal. Like only God can make it for us. This is lesson one of three. I love you guys and we'll listen to each other or you listen to me and share the link with others. Bye.